Hello and welcome to Higher or Lower, brought to you by SpreadX, Sporting Index and Odds Checker. This is the show where we preview the weekend's football, looking at the spread betting markets, finding the midpoint and saying if we think we'll, they will go higher or lower. I'm your host, George Ellick. I'm delighted to be joined by Jack Wright and by Dan Worth from whoscored.com. And guys... You mentioned to me last week that you were getting quite annoyed with my preview, my intros and how long they were <laughs> and how I carried on. So we'll just, all I'll say is I'll just go through the leaderboard. So I'm top on 59%, uh, Jack second on 57% correct, Dan 55% and odds checker audience, you guys at home, 54%. So all four of us are beating mm. the market. Traders. Yeah, yeah. Nice. That's getting close to the top though, isn't it? Good week for the traders last week, apparently. <laughs> I can't, Good week for you. I can't say I was, I was away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I thought so. I was, I, was, I was down in Devon, so I didn't really pay any attention to the football. No but it looks, all I can see is that I'm... That you're top. You're top. Top of the tree. So. Oh, to be the host. Yeah. Although, weirdly, my number's gone down. But, um, yeah, so this is, this is uh, a big week for us to hopefully bounce back after a difficult one. Yeah. Uh, we're going to start with Friday Night Football in the EFL. Preston North End hosting QPR. Um, for this one, we're looking at the supremacy market. So this is where how many goals the uh, favourite will beat the underdog in. Preston, the favourites for this one, uh, the midpoint is 0 0.6, 0 0.6. So it's 0 0.5 to, buy, to sell, sorry, 0 0.7 to buy. So if you're going higher than 0.6, you're saying you think Preston will win. Lower is QPR or a draw. So should we get into it? Let's get into Let's it. Go. Let's get into it. Higher or lower at 0.6, Preston over QPR. Three, two, one. Oy. Wow, a full sweep. Marti Cifuentes' QPR is making us feel good. They are. <laughs> so is that pronunciation. Marti Cifuentes. Oh, absolutely superb sí. stuff. Yeah, are you looking at me because you want me to go yeah. first? You are. Okay, well, if you'd have told me a few short weeks ago that I was going to be siding with Queen's Park Rangers Who'd have thought? against anyone, mm. I'd have thought you were mad, and you're not mad. Um, but, um, yeah, here I am, siding with <laughs> QPR. QPR. Yeah, uh, and there was a shrewd, and it is a shrewd, EFL judge that did tell me that QPR's new manager, Marti Cifuentes, uh, was going to be a good acquisition. Major. And it mm -hmm. started off very well for them, I think. Yeah. Uh, a kind of solid beginning, a couple of draws, but a complete shift in dynamic from what was there under Gareth Ainsworth. More possession, some decent attempts at goal, um, so picked up that point against Rotherham. The Bristol City home draw seemed to be... Um, a war of attrition, really, that one, to be fair. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, they weren't conceding chances, which is obviously what they were doing um, previously. And they were very unlucky against Norwich last weekend, where they dominated the ball, lots and lots of possession, only conceded one shot on target. Unfortunately, then that was the only goal of the game. <laughs> um, but had, uh, say, a decent amount themselves, nine shots, three on target. Sam Field had an amazing chance right at the death to, to snatch a draw, a deserve a draw, has to be said, and uh, put it narrowly wide. So... Um, but bounce back from that with the first win under Marti Cifuentes. And uh, I need a perfect line. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, great win against Stoke. Uh, obviously, Stoke were down to 10 men for mm -hmm. a part of that game, but um, well over 2 XG, 14 attempts at goal, so 9 on, nine on target as well. So a, a decent performance, and um, I think Elias Chair is the key part of this for them. Um, seems to be enjoying his football again, mm. and uh, so the, the new managers come in and, and, and worked his magic there, I think, and identified him as the key man, and uh, he's getting back to his best. So um, be interesting to see him Friday night. North End, the opposite replies for them really one nil up uh, last time out, and managed to lose with two added on time goals uh, against Cardiff, and then were battered by Middlesbrough in mm. week three down in the first half when they had the first half that. Um, Ryan Lowe described as very unacceptable. A poor performance from them. Ended up losing 4-0. Uh, only two wins in the last 11 in the championship. Uh, well, only one win in the last five at home. Uh, so to get both the draw and the away win on side here. Um, against the side, I think Preston a bit streaky. They tend to go in, in <coughs> runs. And they had a great run of wins uh, earlier in the season. Now I think it might well be a series that's re regressing. And uh, I think QPR can take advantage of that for certain. I really like the idea of being very unacceptable, as if like once you cross the line of acceptability, you can go even further. You know, absolutely. Um, yeah, I'm. I just. Uh, I think Preston starts the season probably has them in a, a false position in terms of the market. I think that's starting to. They're starting to regress down to being a mid-table team, which is probably what they are coming here off the back of that disappointing, well, two really disappointing defeats in the manner of them too. QPR definitely improved um, under Marti Cifuentes, and I think. You know, this is basically a draw no bet bet. You're either backing Preston to win or you're backing uh, QPR. Or not even draw no bet, double chance. You're backing QPR yeah. or the mm -hmm. draw. 
and uh, I think that the latter has to be the more likely outcome. Yeah, for sure. Like especially when, as you both said, QPR's confidence is going up, Preston's is going down. Mm. And I feel like in that circumstance, you need the draw on side. Um, Preston have also got a couple of injuries. Potts is out. Well, he's not injured at all. He's picked up too many yellows, but he's their third highest rated player, so that's a big miss. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I never thought I'd be on QPR side no. for the whole season, really. But um, Trends come to an end. We've talked about this, and we're going to see an end to the Friday night doom for um, QPR. I know you like irrelevant stats, George. Yeah. Here's probably one of the best I've come up with. Okay. QPR are winless in their last 14 Friday night championship games. Wow. Yeah. Drew, drawn two, lost uh, um, 12. It's about time. It is about time. I remember when, I was, when I was a kid, Oxford was so bad on Tuesday nights <laughs> that they got someone to come and like bless the pitch. Did and then, no, we started playing Wednesdays instead. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way to end that Tuesday, yeah, right, th- isn't it? I think that worked. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I know the same team has struggled on a Saturday. Anyway, <laughs> um, Preston, though, the opposite. Unbeaten in their last nine Friday night championship Ooh. games. So we are going to see the end of that run here. Horrible trends. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and also Chris Willock scoring late on for QPR is big because he was a key player for them, has really been poor for the last year or so. And if yeah. he can be back to form, be a massive uh, attacking threat that they add to their arsenal. Um, arsenal. Arsenal. Are we talking about Arsenal today? No, no Ars- not. Arsenal. Oh, no. Jesus Christ. Your pun, not mine. No, but I didn't mean, <laughs> I didn't mean to say you that. You did. <laughs> Awful. I'm trying to think of something better. Um, Baggies, Foxes next. Uh, early kickoff <laughs> on Saturday. Total goal minutes um, here. The line has, has been tumbling uh, in the last couple of days. So the, the midpoint here is 130. So it's 125 to sell, 135 to buy. Uh, Baggy is obviously in flying form as it is. Leicester is finally succumbing in a tight game, uh, conceding a, a very late goal to Jeff Hendrick and Sheffield Wednesday during one all on Wednesday night, opening the championship race back up again. Higher or lower, 130. Three, two, one. Yeah. I thought that might happen. <laughs> yeah. Music to my ears when you said that it uh, plummeted. Yes, yeah, not low enough though, is it? Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. You're going against the market. Yeah. It's okay. It's fine. fine. I'm happy to do that. Right. Stick my neck out a little bit. Yeah. Um, my main rationale here is Leicester have conceded a goal 80 plus, or sorry, not just conceded, there's been a goal in Leicester games 80 plus in the last three, showing a trend and it's not being bucked this time. It's going to continue. I think West Brom, the side that are coming into this in form, I'm really enjoying Leicester's sort of. I don't even know what you'd call it. It's not a massive dip, but... A uh, wobble. Wobble. And long may it continue <laughs> um, for, for Reading's 106, of course. Um, but yeah, West Brom, five wins in their last six. Um, scoring goals. Swift um, in his new position. He scored six already. So obviously, I'm a big fan of John Swift for, for his services for, for the Royals. Um, fancy him to get on the score sheet here. Um, I'm just hoping for goals. And now it's gone down to 130. I'm even happier with my selection. Jack? Well, all the shrewd money obviously coming here for the uh, selling. The, <laughs> yeah, the, all aboard. The lower line, yeah, choo-choo. Uh, intriguing clash, yeah, West Brom bang in form. Um, Leicester, I don't think we'll, we'll um, present them with any fears. I think West Brom will, will be absolutely bang up for this one. Um, they do tend to like an early goal, actually, uh, West Brom. And I can see them looking to get that and then hang on and shut. Leicester out. That's the kind of way I see this one going. I fancy West Brom to actually win this one. Mm. Um, and, and that success, Carlos Corberan. Carlos Corberan. <laughs> it's just, but then Carlos Corberan, it's much easier to say in just a regular English it's, Even accent. I can say it. Like Marty Sefuentes. just yeah. doesn't sound right, does no, it? No, no so, it's not right. Yeah. Mm. Carlos Corberan. Enza Maresca, another one that he kind of rolls off the tongue. Okay. Well, what, what a host of fantastic names we've got in the championship. We do, yes. <laughs> this season. Russell Martin. Russell Martin. <laughs> Russ. <laughs> so, uh, but back to Carlos Corberan, and he's doing a fantastic job at West Brom, of course. Yeah, yeah. like uh, took, took him over, I think, about 23rd when he, when he took over, went on a great run, just missed out last season. But got them up to fifth, and I said, I think it's built on a, on a very sturdy defence. 1-0 um, victory against Cardiff was a, was a nice one midweek. Certainly following up that very impressive 2-0 win against Ipswich. Kept Ipswich at arm's length throughout that, which is no mean feat, as was proven last night when they raced into a three-goal lead against Millwall. Um, I say, only Leicester conceded less goals, though, than West Brom. Uh, West Brom conceded 17. Uh, Leicester have conceded just 11, last of which, of course, was that one late last night against Sheffield Wednesday. Um, but this is a big one for West Brom to close that gap and close the gap to eight points on Leicester with a win here. So, um, I say, I think that... Um, the, the defence that West Brom have got 
five clean sheets in the last six of the Hawthorns will mean that, that this will be a, a low scorer and therefore we're on side with the lower call. Yeah, I mean, I, I actually think, and weirdly, because the way that Maresca and Corbera and their like, ideologies in football are completely different, but I think there are massive similarities in both of these sides and that even though they are winning games and doing well, they're both kind of built upon a really good structure and defensive unit. Like Leicester basically prevent the opposition from creating good chances because they have all the ball. With West Ham and Corbrand, you've got a team who are incredibly happy just to let the opposition have it when they're ahead. Mm. And you sit in a low block and basically stop the opposition from scoring. Yeah. Like West Corbrand, when he took Huddersfield to the playoff final, it was all based on being them being just impossible to break down when they went ahead in games. And, you know, if they were holding on for a point. And last season, it didn't really happen at West Brom. This season, it absolutely is. Like, you talk to... You know, whether it was Cardiff in midweek or Ipswich the, the time before that, um, basic or Coventry, like when they go ahead, they seem to just be so solid and yeah. so resolute. And I think that's Cole Brown's biggest. It's funny how people kind of think of him as being this Bielsa disciple because <laughs> he worked under him. They, they couldn't be more different as yeah. managers and coaches in terms of him just being happy to set drill aside to be uh, strong defensively. And Leicester similarly, like even though you know people are getting very excited about Leicester, their games are, are generally fairly low margin. Like they don't create loads of chances themselves. They don't give up loads of chances either. You know, Sheffield Wednesday did as well as most as any team really does against Leicester from an attacker standpoint on Wednesday night. They created an XG of kind of one point five. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I think either of these teams when they go ahead will be pretty good at seeing out the game. And you know you're having to look at at least three goals probably to hit this line. Yeah, you know, to get two late ones, and I, I just can't really see why that would be the case. So, right. yeah, West Brom averaging um, eight point two shots conceded per home game, which is mm. like sensational mm -hmm. stuff across the season so far. So, um, I think that bodes well. Yeah, I, I really West think Leicester will struggle to break them down. Yeah, um, agreed. Right, so we're in agreement there. We're going to Nottingham Forest, Everton, up to the Premier League. Well done if you've stuck <laughs> around this long. Uh, you've made it to the top <laughs> flight. Um, Let's uh, yeah. Total goals is the market we're looking at here. Um, there is a, a new customer offer as well in the in the click on the uh, description below. If you don't have a Spreadex account or a Sporting Index account, click on the link and you can get uh, bet twenty five get fifty. So fifty pounds worth of free bets across fixed and spread markets. If you agree with us or you don't agree with us, you can follow us in uh, or not uh, on these markets. And total goals is one of those. And the uh, midpoint here is two point five, so two point four to sell, two point six to buy. How many goals there will be in the game? Um, so yeah, higher here is three or more, lower is two or fewer. Three, two, one. Wow! Yeah, I'm surprised. I, I thought I'd be on my own. Did you? I'm, oh, I'm, glad, I'm glad we're, we're here. That's I, quite nice, yeah, I, I was surprised. But BTTS has copped in all but one of uh, Forest's home games so far this season. You saw Everton get beat 3-0 home to Manchester United last time out, but they had loads of chances and it was mm. a combination of Anana and um, some pretty poor finishing that cost them I mean, they, they really should have probably got something out of the game, even though they lost it 3-0. Um, and, yeah, I, I just think this is a game where both sides are going to come into it with a fairly attacking philosophy, mm. um, especially Forrest at home. Um, pressure on Steve Cooper a little bit with murmurs about his future being up for question. And it's just, it's just quite a low line. And I'm, I'm happy to, to think that on the balance of, of play, on the balance of what we've seen from both sides this season, the most likely outcome here is for there to be three or more goals. So I'm going, I've normally kind of looked to sell this market, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is quite low, isn't it? 2.6 to buy three goals and we're winners. Mm. Uh, yeah, I, I completely agree with you. I think both teams are going to be super keen for the win. I mean, that's a ridiculous thing to say because obviously every team is super keen for the win, but arguably no team. Like you more. said that, and then <laughs> said the line that George was then going to say after you. Yeah, so yeah. So yeah. you covered everything. I've covered yeah. my base. I'm used to George. <laughs> yeah. Um, you're right, with the big chances for Everton, they've only scored 14 of their 35 big chances. But that does mean the chances are there, um, and I just need to take them. Ten goals in Forest last two games, absolute carnage. Long may it continue. I agree. The main point to talk about here is you, we've gone from the championship of C C Fuentes, C Fuentes. Him, uh, Maresca, and uh, <laughs> Corberan, to Steve Cooper and Sean Dyche. Sam okay. Aladice is watching this and absolutely <laughs> loving it. <laughs> Absolutely right. So, uh, yeah, I I'm really looking forward to this game, actually. I think mm. it's going to be a white hot atmosphere at, at the city ground. It'll need to be. It'll be freezing cold. Mm. But, um, obviously, Everton Siege mentality fans going there. I think it's got the makings of, uh, say, that atmosphere that's going to drive uh, a high-octane game on. And uh, I think both sides here uh, will be 
desperate to win it. More cliches, here they come. Mm -hmm. But um, I think Forrest have got to are be careful. They're conscious of the fact that Everton could have those, at the minute they look quite comfortable to a certain extent as far as that gap to the bottom. But Everton get those, some of those points returned back to them and suddenly it gets very, very tight mm -hmm. with that Luton win last week and it's certainly putting the cat amongst the pigeons down mm -hmm. at the bottom. So a few people looking over their shoulders. So yeah, I just feel that that's going to lead to a game where there's going to be plenty of chances. I can't see either of these sides keeping a clean sheet. And therefore, I think that, that does lead itself to the fact that we only need three or more goals here. And uh, that looks like a decent play. Everett conceded two plus in four of their six away games. And Forrest has scored two in their last three at home and four of their last six. So uh, I think that both these sides have got the makings of, uh, of goals. Goals galore mm. at Forest. You've heard it here first. Uh, Newcastle against Manchester United, two sides <coughs> who came away with draws in the Champions League. Commiserations Somehow. to Newcastle fans. Uh, yeah, who'll be frustrated after that 98th minute Kylian Mbappe penalty prevented them from getting that win in Paris. Um, yeah, but they need to bounce back here. Uh, and they are favourites to do so against Manchester United, um, a sign of, of maybe the, the state of both clubs right now. Um, we're looking at the supremacy market here. 0.45 to sell, 0.65 to buy, so 0.5, point, sorry, 0.55 is the midpoint. So again, if you're going higher here, you're going for a Newcastle win. Lower is a draw or a defeat. Eddie Howe versus Eric Tenag, 3, 2, 1. Ooh, you've drunk the Manchester United Kool-Aid. Are you going to tell me they've won three games in a row and kept three clean sheets? Done, let's move on. <laughs> Well, to be fair, I have got in here Onana as the highest rated keeper in the league and in fine form, but I did manage to catch some of the game last night and I was potentially going to cross that out. Mm. But I, I think the injuries are, are my main sort of reasons here. Um, obviously, we always talk about it in this market, getting a draw on side, it's massive. Um, but yeah, Newcastle were absolutely riddled. Um, and, you know, fair enough, they put up a good fight against PSG, but I'd, I'd argue that they're probably quite lucky to... Away with Give us it was the XG like four and a half, I think it yeah, was. Yeah, it was PSG. like nearly five, wasn't it? Um, I don't know. Man United are just so so strange this season. Um, they're the form team with like wins against relatively easy <laughs> opposition. Um, I, I've toyed with both sides and I've, I've landed on on low and, and I'm siding with Ten Hag and Man United. Wow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I think Newcastle are just a better football team than Manchester United. I think had Newcastle been the only side who had a away exploits in the Champions League, it maybe did be a different case. But they played on Tuesday night. You've had a you know United have a much longer journey back from Turkey from Wednesday night. Um, I just think United are poor. Like you know we we spoke last week and we had Everton to beat them, and as we said, I think Everton put in a decent performance and it was mm -hmm. an unbelievable goal from Garnacho. Like I think one of the best bicycle kicks we've seen. But um, they were so poor in that first half, apart from that moment of quality. Mm -hmm. And they went in a half-time ahead somehow, and then they managed to make the game safe. Um, I think Newcastle, you mentioned the injuries, but it doesn't seem to be hurting them too much. With Bruno back in the field now, um, Isak in amongst the goals, like they, they just look still pretty solid to my eye. So, um, yeah, it's just a case for me where United are running, are running hot off something that seems to be un like unsustainable. You look at the Everton game... Yeah. You look at the Fulham game as well. Like eventually, teams are going to start taking their chances against them. And you know, you mentioned Onana there. Yes, I think he's played a big part in in the good uh, run for United in the league. But he's obviously shot confidence, and it's only a matter of time, I think, until what happened yesterday happens uh, in the in the league. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm pretty pretty confident here that we're going to see a, a Newcastle home win. Yeah, you've mentioned pretty much all the key elements of what I was looking for there. But Good. Newcastle's home form has been absolutely irresistible, hasn't mm. it? They've been <laughs> sensational. Six wins from seven. The only one going against that was that kind of weird game against Liverpool where they batted Liverpool and Liverpool managed to find a winner, late winner with a damn ten men. But uh, Raheem Sterling's free kick against them last week was the first goal. Obviously, ended the run of four successive home shutouts there. Defence, you talked about um, the game against Paris Saint-Germain, they find a way to keep clean sheets. They find a way to defend very, very solidly with what they've got. And uh, they nearly did it again uh, in, um, in the Champions League. So against this United side, I would expect them again to be very, very solid, keep it very, very tight. Uh, the injuries, I think the 1-11, to 11, absolutely sensational and superb. Then the key elements of that is having a focal point up front in Isaac. Mm -hmm who's got the best goals per 90-minute ratio in the entire league, beating Haaland. 
um, averaging uh, 0.93 goals per 90 minutes, uh, which is sensational stuff. And Gimaraish too as well, come bringing him back into that middle of the park um, is a massive driver. He's missed seven Premier League games since, since he came into the side, which Newcastle failed to win any of those. So him back is great. And Lewis Miley as well was fantastic last week against Chelsea. Got his, that first assist for him as well, and a nice assist to boot. Um, so he's slotted into that side, and it's not as a case of because he has to. I think he's now kind of at that point where he's earning the right to be there. I just think they're going to have too much energy, hunger, passion, power for United. Um, eight o'clock game on on Tyne side. The Toon Army, shirts off. <laughs> yeah. you know, weather watch, minus two, five, minus <laughs> yeah, five. Let's have a look. Yeah, Sorry, I should, should have done research be. before. <laughs> but um, absolutely. And I think, you know, after warming themselves up with a few, a few uh, cheeky ones, you mentioned the pressure on Anana. They're going to be targeting a few of these yeah, United sure. players and putting a lot of, a lot of pressure on. And mm. I think it's so, error prone uh, last night in the Champions League. And that might be a, a re- return to that. And I think the kick final point is the United are flat track bullies. They have beaten some of the lowest ranked sides in the league. And this, this is season. a bumpy track. And this is a bumpy track. <laughs> it's lethal. It's lethal. And lost 2 0 here last season. Not here, but at St James's Park. And uh, obviously, Newcastle already gone to Old Trafford and won 3 0 in the League Cup with a rotated side. But last season, United didn't win any of their games away from home against any of the top nine. Um, mm. so you have to go down to Fulham in 10th for their first win, so away from home. I think that's enough now, isn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah. well, you know what I mean. And <laughs> the two away games that they've lost this season, Spurs and Arsenal. So, again, going across that record, they've conceded 33 goals and scored nine across those, picking up just one point from, uh, from those, those fixtures. So, yeah, that's several reasons why yeah. uh, I think that I've got a side with Newcastle. Minus three. Oh, well, it's close. It's minus two to minus five. So. In, the, in the middle there, higher or lower. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right, same game now, different market. Uh, last match goal, the midpoint here is 66.5. So if you're going high, you think there'll be a goal scored after the 66th minute. If you think uh, lower, it'll be, uh, there'll be no more goals late on in the game. So higher is a vote for late goals. Lower is a vote for no late goals. Three, two, one. Yeah, All higher. All three this time. Yeah, I, it just seems to me like both teams are probably at their happiest in transition and therefore if either team is ahead then naturally it's going to lend itself to that. We've seen loads of games yeah. this season when Newcastle have been ahead and they've been able to pick teams off late on. We know that Callum Wilson is the man who comes off the bench and generally tends to score when he does so. Yeah. I think it's the same for United. Look at the way the Galatasaray game went after an early goal as well, really end to end. Yeah, and, and also the, the fact that we've got two teams coming in from Europe. I know some people seem to think that tiredness creates no goals but I also mm. think there can be an element where if one team is leggy then the other one can really just pick them off so um, yeah you can hopefully back that up with some numbers Jack yeah a little bit um, Newcastle home games this season uh, four of seven have gone higher um, but there's been two 90 minute strikes in there or added time strikes two games and an 83 as well the ones that missed were the cheeky little traders here um, 64, 66 and 64 so wow. peppering around that so if you are to lose based on Newcastle so yeah, far yeah, yeah. it's a marginal loss mm. which means that you know, there is value in looking at the higher line um, as far as Man United five of their six away games have seen higher than the line we're looking for here 83, 90, 45 77, 90 and 75 the combined average 9 of 13 have gone higher at an average of 76 minutes for the last goal Nice. So, like sixty-six point five. There's a bit of juice here. Then, if you know, yeah, most of those yeah. minutes you said there are a fair bit higher. And even you know, if you were to buy the three defeats, it's, it's minimal loss, isn't it? Yeah, tiny. Mm. Excellent. So we're we're all higher. I've looked at overall Premier League stats here rather than just specific teams. Sixty-one percent of goals scored this season in the second half, which appreciate is is not ideal for the. Well, it is ideal, but might not mean we win. Forty-four percent of goals scored, total goals scored in the Premier League this season, are after the sixtieth minute. And 25.5% of those, which if you take it by 15 minute stints, is the biggest, scored after the 75th minute. There you go. So we'll take a couple 75th minutes. Well, we won't. We'll take just one. Just one's fine. <laughs> 175th, one night, 85th. Yeah. It means you just, and you're breathing easy and then you, yeah, why not? <laughs> We're flying. But that would also make up 90. And, and of juice. course, of course, yeah. yeah it would. Don't confuse people. Yeah. Um, we get a lot of, lot of extra juice, obviously, this season. We've talked about it from the get go, haven't we? This yeah. added on time. It's yeah. not seemingly slowing down or getting less uh, so if you get a 90 plus 10 yes it does make up as 90 but you know we're getting a second half that 
last 55 minutes we brought in play x x y z but yeah we're getting a lot of extra bang for our buck mm. agreed two more games to cover um an all london affair now this one has had me scratching my head all morning <laughs> west ham crystal palace we're looking at total booking points so bookings 10 points for a yellow uh 25 points for a red uh, if you get yellow and a red then that's 35 points so the midpoint here is 48 46 to sell 50 to buy so here if you're going lower, you need basically four yellows or two yellows and a red card, five yellows or more or anything like that, and it's going to be higher. Michael Oliver, the best, isn't he? Out referee. Some would say, yeah. <laughs> Out referee. Yeah. Out, no, not the best for cards, just the best, you know, yeah. the, the best. Definitely referee. not the best for cards. Uh, he is on the whistle. Um, so are we going higher or lower? Three, two, one. Yeah, I hate this. <laughs> I, I just, every fibre of my being <laughs> wants to go lower here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then I looked into it and I was just like, you know, he does give some tickets, doesn't he? He does. He does give some yellows. And this is, you know, there's, I, think I was going to say there's no love lost between these two, but there's also, there's, there's just no love between them, <laughs> basically. They're not rivals or anything like that, but mm. I think London games are always a little bit spicier. You've always got a big travelling contingent, you don't have to go too far. True. Um, and crucially, I always think this is kind of overlooked when you're looking at, at bookings markets, is that, it should be quite a tight game. And I generally in games, if one team goes two or three ahead, then often it can kind of unravel a little bit into a, into a nothing event. Whereas here, I, I don't think that's particularly likely. I also think they're two teams who are probably happier without the ball. And that in itself can mean that you see two direct teams who look um, to, to kind of move forward quickly rather than one team sitting off and not really engaging, which again can drive bookings. Uh, generally under um, David Moyes, West Ham haven't been a particularly um, good team for, for, for bookings, but this season they rank eighth at the moment in total booking points. Uh, Crystal Palace are down in 17th, which obviously isn't ideal. But they do have, of course, Michael Alise, who should get fouled a fair bit. No, Eze is, is frustrating. Um, yeah, as a, it's probably as close as that if this was a midpoint 50.5, I probably would have gone lower. But it was, on, it was a coin toss, and I basically predicted that you'd both go lower. <laughs> so I thought I'd try and get a winner. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Dan? Fair enough. Yeah, uh, Michael Oliver, 21 fouls per game. Um, which ranks him quite near the bottom. I think it was, uh, yeah, like third fewest. Uh, four yellows per game this season, which obviously brings this line in, but his lifetime average is just three. So I'm focusing on, on well, both of them. You're hoping he's going to regress to the mean. Yeah, and that would be absolutely fine. Um, I was expecting you to say he's given three reds, but as we know from this show, don't, don't care about we that. love a trend that's going to be bucked, and those three reds have come in his last two games. Yeah, so yeah. So he's zero not, reds he's not giving game. a red. I've ignored the red. It's all yellows. Cool. Well, that's fine. And you even mentioned that Palace don't get many bookings, so that's you've that's, us up. that's a trend that's going to you go for him, Dan. Yeah. You go for him. That's what's going to get bucked. You're borderline yellow card there. Yeah. No aggression. Oh, warning. Um, yeah. Fair enough. I mean, you can think what you want. Uh, <laughs> Palace last <laughs> Palace last season uh, was seventh in the discipline rankings. So if we're going to be talking about any regressing to means, maybe it's going to be them finally picking up some cards. Who knows? Let's see. Roy would never send a team out to hurt another. Uh, Jack. <laughs> he would not, would he? Um, trying to pick out what you haven't said already. So, um, yeah, West Ham games average 41.15 booking points per game. That's 18th in the, in the league table. So, uh, low down there. And Palace's average is 43.46, which is 17th. So, uh, two of the very um, bad games seemingly very well behaved. Um, you mentioned no main rivalry. You also mentioned the fact that neither of them really like to have the ball too much. That's highlighted by the fact they rank 16th and 14th for possession, 41.2 and 42% respectively. No Eze, I think, is a big big mm. factor as well as far as me signing here. Again, I was very much yeah, teetering on the edge yeah, of sure. which way to go, so it's a very close call. Um, you have to go back to 2019 for this fixture, the last time there was 50-plus booking points in it, uh, which was eight games ago. The referee that day? Michael Oliver. Michael Oliver. Yeah, so there's, take it, take it out what you will. Um, and interestingly, I will give you some justification for your side of the bet because it's a very Thank tough you. one to call. Five of West Ham six home games have gone higher, averaging 50.83, uh, 30.83, four, 20 exactly against, and five of Palace's seven away games. So the percentages, although they're low in the table, it seems to be when they're playing mm. uh, other way around. So uh, average 47.14, and Mike Oliver's ranked 12th. The interesting thing for me, that he's ranked 12th as far as his booking point average is concerned, but his average is 51, which is high. That would normally, over yeah, the yeah. recent years, wouldn't it? It would have put him mm -hmm. way up 
the table. So it's interesting. The, the dial has been shifted quite a lot as far as what we're regarded as now a, a, a you know good booking point referee. So um, well there. Um, last time we refereed West Ham was at Brentford in May. One yellow card, which was given to Brentford that day. Last time we refereed Crystal Palace was in April. Four yellow cards that day, but only one given to Crystal Palace. And uh, he's a Newcastle fan, in case you want to know. I don't know if you can see this, but um, we can see here that Jack has written higher and then crossed it out oh. a bit lower. So that's how, that's how close That's how close, that's be, how close it is. I'll be a bit careful. Well done, traders. <laughs> and having listened to you there, I think you've, even though you've said lower, I feel now I feel more confident in my higher selection. I, I, I'm, it's you've written notes for higher, so it's not surprising. I've done a complete <laughs> mixture. It's, a, it's right on the fence, right on the fence, as you rightly said at the start of the piece. <laughs> um, right, finally, probably the game of the weekend, isn't it? Manchester City hosting Tottenham. Uh, City uh, came back from behind against Leipzig in midweek, having been 2-0 down, they won the game 3-2. And they are favourites to beat Spurs here. Spurs still obviously depleted from injuries. Um, who scored? The podcast I do with who scored Edge of the Box, we had a injured 11 uh, yeah, cool. for, for Spurs. Just shows wow. how many players they're missing. City are favourites for this one, and heavily so. Uh, 0.175 is the midpoint. So if you're going to go higher here, you need City to cover the minus one handicap. Um, yeah. And lower, you know, City would win the game by a single goal, and you would still win. Uh, we're going higher or lower than uh, City over Spurs at 1.75. Three, surely. two, one. Only one outcome, surely. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Go on. What? What's the outcome? <laughs> well, I am taking my life in my hands. I, mean, I am going with Spurs. Siding with Spurs. Yes, got a lot of players out injured, as you've well made the point of there. City's home record phenomenal, but that winning streak did end last week with Liverpool showing teams how it can be done. I'd, I'd say that four teams are taking points off. In the league, certainly. Four teams have taken points off Manchester City so far this season. One being Wolves, who kind of sat deep and looked to mm -hmm. hit on the break. The others being Arsenal, Chelsea, Liverpool, all play a certain way. Mm. High press, quite bold on the ball. Tottenham have got to play the same way. That's just, we've seen already, that's how they, how they do play. The concerns, obviously they have lost their last three on the spin. The concerns were, how are they going to cope with the likes of Madison being out? How are they going to bounce you know, back from that? The answer is they've <coughs> lost three, but they... Well, we obviously know about the Chelsea one where they were down to nine men. Then Wolves, they were in front for 87 minutes and managed to yeah, contrive yeah. to lose that one by a single goal. So, you know, different sides, but in that context, this one would still come in. And then Aston Villa, where they lost 2 1, but had three goals disallowed and <laughs> had better XG and better processes. So they're still doing enough for me in the games to say that they have still got the creativity, they have still got the players that can score goals. So, therefore, I'm prepared to take this on against Man City that. <laughs> you feel bad saying they're, they're sort of stuttered because they've done so well. But when you look at the size that they've beaten at home, especially in the league, 6-1 against Bournemouth, 5-1 uh, against Fulham and 2-0 against Forest would be the ones that would cover this line. But then 2-1 against Brighton, 1-0 uh, against Newcastle mm. and 1-1 against Liverpool. So the better sides have caused them a problem um, at the Etihad, certainly. And of course, the added factor that Manchester City did play in the Champions League and had a bit of a tough fight to get over the line against RB Leipzig, while uh, Tottenham could prepare for this one, I think Ange will have them very well prepared for this. And I'm looking forward to seeing the game, and Tottenham putting up a good fight, which is all I need. Spurs putting up a fight, is that going to be enough, Dan? No. Oh. No, and the guys on X agree with, with us two, 81% agree. Wow. Go on the 19%. That's, that's, quite, that's quite a lot of people, isn't it? <laughs> it is quite uh, a lot. Well, I'm not sure actually, I didn't look how many people voted, <laughs> but it's quite a large percentage of yeah. those people that did. Um, it's a, it's a high line, isn't it? But I, I just think, right, any normal Premier League fan would be pretty happy with City's form this season. But I think Pep, not that he's a fan, he's obviously their manager, <laughs> will, will, be, will be pretty annoyed. And he'll be, he'll be wanting more from, from his side. The two draws, and, and it's a win in the Champions League, but mm -hmm. the way they went about it, I always think is amazing. But I imagine he is probably a little bit upset that they conceded two goals. So I'm, I'm expecting City to, to get even better. And, and then they've not exactly been bad. Tottenham, the complete opposite. They've barely got any players left. <laughs> Lost their last three. Um, I was speaking to Bennett, who scored, and he, he's not very confident. He's a Spurs fan. Well, he's been born that it's way. It's amazing. Yeah, true. That's it's amazing great. that you're basing some of your pick here on, on Ben McAleer's... Uh, he's a very knowledgeable guy. He is. I mean, he's very knowledgeable. Very. Um, he's, he's even told I me... I might come, come in here next week and start reading off some tipsters and what they think. 
Yeah. <laughs> what was Jack? What Jack think? Just Jack, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's triple captaining Holland. That says it all. Is he? It triple all. captain early. Oh. Yeah. Is it early still? Yeah, I think so. Or, 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 or are you calling Erling Haaland early? Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Is that nickname? laughs> yeah. me, me and Early go way back. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't be massively surprised here if Spurs get something out of the game. Uh, but, so I, I, I wouldn't personally, with my own money, be selling this line necessarily. But I think there is certain ways this game could go and surely quite a likely one is that Ange does what Ange does and plays a ridiculously high line mm. and City just pick them off. Yeah. And for that reason, I think basically any scoreline of City winning by two, three, four comes into, comes into play here. Um, the Spurs' injury issues are obvious. They have looked good in spells against Chelsea and Villa, games they eventually lost. Um, you know, City, yes, they played midweek, but they were playing at home. I just, yeah, I, you know... Spurs, we know, will come on City even at 0-0, which is not something that many teams do to Manchester City. And, you know, we don't really know how that necessarily plays out because teams don't often do it. Um, we saw Liverpool have some chance on the break against them. We saw Chelsea kind of take the game to them a bit more. Two games that they, they didn't win. Um, but we know that City can rack up a score when, when teams do do that. So, yeah, I'm going to go higher here. Um, Spurs do have a good record against them. Definitely not. The last, three of the last four, I believe. And the one they yeah. lost yeah. Uh, last season, which was 4-2 here, Mm. Um, they were two 0 up at half time, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. And then conceded the 90th minute mm. goals, which would have lost this particular line. So, interesting, absolutely intriguing game. Yeah, it's going to be great. Yeah, it should be very, very good uh, for the neutral. Um, now, final mar market we're looking at here is shirt numbers. So this is the total numbers on the back of the shirts, the players that score in the game. So you know, if number nine scores twice, it makes up 18. If number nine scores, number five scores, it'll make up 14, etc. Uh, and the line here is high. It is 60. So you're looking for 60 points over the course of the game. Um, 58 sells, 62 to buy. What are we doing here? Three, two, one. What? Oh, <laughs> I don't believe it. All in. I should call this show Mugs FC. Um, <laughs> right, Dan, you go first. Well, I mean, we've, we've done this market with City before, so there's probably not much point in me... Uh, rattling off their numbers. Rally, yeah. Rattling mm. off their numbers. They have a few players that have quite tasty numbers for us. Yeah. None more so than five. Mm. Spurs, similar. Kulisevsky, 21. Brennan Johnson, 22. But Spurs have scored in every game so far this season. And although this sort of backs up your, <laughs> your view in the, in the, in the previous Keep market, chances are they will score here, right? Mm. But City will obviously score five more. Five. <laughs> Um, so, you know, if, if Kulisewski or, or Johnson gets it, that 60 doesn't look such a, such a tall order. Um, you talk about the high line. I think I obviously agree with you that City can expose that. If they do, like, the balls in from, from Silva and Rodri through to Foden, and Haaland <laughs> and Alvarez. Yeah, I, it is a high line. I, I, I really don't mind it at all. I'm, I'm more than happy to be, be going above. Jack? You were close to there, one of your famous lines. I can see nothing other than. So <laughs> you, you, you tipped around. I've stayed it. away from the weather as well this week. Yeah, I thought it would be quite cold. It will be. Yeah. That's minus two. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. Shirt numbers, obviously, we, we were right last time round. Yeah. It was that 4 4 draw, wasn't it? Yeah. Against Chelsea, so smashed the line in that time round. Could we see something similar? Obviously, the traders think that there's going to be plenty of goals in it. Mm -hmm. And as you rightly say, there's this Foden's. Been scoring goals recently, he's decent. Um, Bernardo, Bernardo Silva's got a couple guys with, in with 20 shirt numbers or higher. Kanji's even scored this season mm. with 25. Yeah. Um, not forgetting him. So Alvarez is 19 as well, which is not a bad number. No. Um, so yeah, I, I just think that there's, um, there's there's goals out there, and uh, I think you've got to take it with City at home. There is that possibility of a, a high scoring affair. Um, and because they've been leaky at the back as well, so mm -hmm. they have not been as tight as they have been recently. So um, Spurs can exploit that because they have been creating plenty of chances. So this should be an entertaining game. Everyone's expecting goals. So let's have some shirt numbers. Yeah, that's it for me. I mean, we've seen City draw four all recently. We saw the Chelsea Spurs game four one. If they weren't disallowed goals, the Villa game would have ended about eight all. <laughs> it's yeah. you know Spurs at the moment are just relentlessly attacking, and that means there's going to be chance at both ends of the pitch. So yeah. You know, for the same reason I said I wanted to go higher, it feels to me like City winning this game by some silly scoreline, mm. like 5-2 <laughs> or something, is, is yeah, fully likely. And if that happens, sure. then 
uh, then yeah, you, you can see where the goals will rack up. You know, you're looking at Spurs' uh, team last week, um, basically all the players in their front five. I know that Benton Co is 30 and he plays a bit deeper and is now injured, but they all had double figures in there uh, apart from Son. So yeah, I think this hopefully will be a game where we see plenty of goals. If that's the case, then we might cover that line. Um, nice. So there we have it. That brings this week's episode of Higher or Lower to a close. Uh, brought to you by SpreadX, Sporting Index and Odds Checker. Look in, click on the link below. If you don't have an account, you can set one up with the guys at SpreadX and Sporting Index uh, with a bet 25, get 50 offer. T's and C's do apply. And do remember with spread betting, losses can exceed your initial deposit. Uh, thank you very much to these guys um, for taking the time to come on the show today. Make sure you check out Odds Checker for all of your fixed odds betting needs ahead of the weekend and who scored for all of your stats. And we'll be back again next week, hopefully having fared a bit better than we did last time. <laughs> uh, enjoy the football and please ensure you gamble responsibly. Yeah.